Quite a very big day here as uh, the number crunching is officially underway. So the voting process has been concluded. So currently what you do have are just the results of uh, the members of parliament that have just been trickling in across the provinces. And also the Zimbabwean Electoral Commission has been very busy with their constituency electoral officers announcing those particular results. Uh, so the main parties, uh, the political parties in Zimbabwe, a lot of them really have been claiming victory victory in terms of those seats. Uh, for example, last night you had uh, the governing party here in Zimbabwe, the ZANU-PF, uh, one of uh, their prominent members, Patrick Chinamasa, insisting that they still want to get a two-third majority in parliament, but also giving their own projections in terms of uh, the results, uh, saying that uh, for the incumbent, uh, President Emerson Nagagwa, they're looking at about 65%. Uh, but also, on the other side, uh, you do also the op have the opposition parties mainly the Triple C, also laying claim to victory, saying that they are also keen to see uh, quite a number of the votes uh, coming into their side. Uh, but something that is quite interesting here in Zimbabwe is that uh, obviously there is a great deal of anxiety as um, this particular time approaches where the Zimbabwean Electoral Commission is going to face uh, scrutiny in terms of making sure that they do deliver the most accurate results, especially in light of a very chaotic phase uh, during the course of the elections. But interesting, during the course of today, you, you're likely to hear from the observer missions, uh, the likes of SADC, the African Union, the Commonwealth, and many other observer missions in terms of their findings uh, during the course of the elections in this country. And obviously they've been here for some time for the pre-election phase, the elections, and also now the post-election period. And what we experienced during the short period of time that we were in that country is the fact that this autocracy is presiding over what effectively is a failed state in Zimbabwe, an undemocratic state that ultimately preys on its citizens and does not want the rest of the world to see Zimbabwe to undertake research around the elections. We basically wanted to find out what the electoral conditions were, whether there was good and effective governance that would allow uh, for the execution of a free and fair election, an election that would ultimately represent the will of the people. Interestingly enough, when we arrived on that Tuesday, we were questioned by uh, an official who claimed uh, also to be part of immigration services, or at least a government official, who asked us a couple of questions. What was our mission? Uh, how long we in intended to be in the country? And then after we had uh, answered these questions, we were basically permitted uh, to enter into Bulawayo, into Zimbabwe. Walking down uh, the streets of, of Bulawayo, my old neighborhood where I grew, grew up, it represented so much in terms of potential. It was a vibrant economy. It was a, a, a society that was very much emblematic of the reconciliation that was um, sort of promised by President Robert Mugabe in the 1980s. So both blacks and whites living in this area, living uh, side by side together and enjoying a, a relatively high standard of living. But what was sad about it also was realizing that the impact of the economic decline, the political decline in Zimbabwe, had basically meant that many of the families who had lived in this neighborhood had opted to vote with their feet. They had decided uh, in many ways to live outside of the country. So it was walking through a, a very familiar place with very many people um, who I, I had experienced having had left the country and finding themselves on foreign shores because Zimbabwe uh, was certainly not the uh, boom potential country of the 1980s in stark contrast was going to the National University of Science and Technology and seeing uh, the fantastic development that was there and the innovation uh, that was provided to students, even though uh, it was somewhat superficial in the sense that uh, we saw uh, the buildings from the outside, the uh, development and the infrastructure that was being built as part of the National University of Science and Technology, it did indicate to us that there was potential for growth, for development in Zimbabwe that had nothing to do uh, with the politics. It's calculated that upwards of 67% 
of that country's population are the youth. The sad thing about it is that many of them find themselves with limited opportunities to access jobs in the formal economy. Many of them uh, have to become vendors selling uh, wares on the streets in order to simply survive. Now, those who can find employment, uh, you know, uh, menial jobs in the formal sector, for example, as waiters, are highly educated, very ambitious, but also at the same time very conscious of the fact that uh, the economy is in decline, that the situation and the conditions in Zimbabwe have increasingly seen them having to live in a country that experiences triple-digit inflation and limited opportunities in the formal. Worst types of dictatorships, rights of the people are not respected, basic freedoms are not respected, and ultimately what happens is we've seen the securitization of the state, where civilian authorities have for all intents and purposes been replaced by these repressive military-led uh, securocrats. So our um, ejection from Zimbabwe in this process that leads to what ultimately is an illegal deportation from Zimbabwe starts off with uh, our GGA team uh, in a team meeting downstairs um, in the lobby. We're suddenly encountered by individuals who claimed to be from uh, Zimbabwe's Department of Immigration. And they wanted uh, us to present ourselves uh, to their offices downtown in Bulawayo. Um, they sat us down and took us through an extensive interrogation where they were asking us what our mission was there, who we intended to engage with. I asked them uh, directly, have we done anything wrong? Uh, and their response was that according to them, um, they could find nothing that we had contravened in terms of the law, in terms of our entry into Zimbabwe. They got up and indicated to us that they needed now to uh, confer with their uh, seniors. And then a very somber looking uh, group of officials came into the room and uh, very apologetically indicated to us that they had been instructed to eject us from Zimbabwe. Led and ably led. From today on was on the 23rd, we are going to remove a ruler and put in place a leader so that there's happiness in Zimbabwe. That number one, Mr. Mnangagwa is not preparing to win. He's plotting to leak. I told Sadak that he stole the election in 2018, but this time I will not accept to allow him to steal the election again. And, and to do so in large numbers, in enough numbers, so that the result cannot be disputed. Because Zimbabwe is in dire economic straits. Its inflation rate is one of the highest in the world. Officially, it hit 175% this June. Unofficially, it's much higher. The country has seen hyperinflation before. It saw monthly inflation rates of almost 80 billion percent in 2008. Yes, we've got the numbers right, 80 billion percent. The country had even issued $100 trillion banknotes. It was then forced to scrap its currency. Thankfully, it hasn't come to that this time, not yet anyway, but inflation has been on the rise for years, and the economy is in a shambles, partly due to Western sanctions on ZANU-PF officials. The US, the UK, and Europe have sanctioned some people in power in Zimbabwe. The World Bank and the IMF have blacklisted the country. It is not eligible for loans. And this is due to the turmoil of the past decades and Zimbabwe's constant defaults in the past. All this has hurt the economy. And this, I must tell you, is a mineral-rich nation Yet, it's one of the poorest in the world, and this backslide has taken place during the decades of ZANU-PF rule. So Chamisa believes that the time is ripe for change, and that the people will vote for a better future. Go home and vote. It's important. Change is an effort by all the citizens. Number two, we wanted to say those who can't come to Zimbabwe or go to Zimbabwe, let them encourage parents in the countryside, in the villages, to also go and vote and vote for change. Um, the third one was also to say, you adopt, support the polling station. We need polling agents at all the 12,000 plus polling stations. And that support comes from the citizens. It's a citizen effort, it's citizens for change. And we need to make sure that we win big and it's a wide margin, it's a landslide. And changes in the air in Zimbabwe. We managed to field in all the constituencies, 210 constituencies, with candidates representing the C, the citizens. We also have managed to 
filled in almost all the wards, 1,970 wards we have in the country, save for a few where we had glitches, administrative glitches, not our own, uh, especially by ZEC, and we're challenging that in court. So we've done very well. ZANU-PF would have wanted to make it impossible for us to register all our candidates by making us pay for presidential candidates 20,000 US dollars. Uh, and for MP candidates, uh, 1,000 US dollars. In fact, we paid close to about a quarter of a million US dollars in cash. Uh, ZANU-PF thought that we would not be able to mobilize those resources, but we thank the citizens of Zimbabwe. They forked out you know, the resources that were required, and we've managed to defeat and shame uh, dictatorship and oppression. We are so happy, we are so excited that we have managed to cross the hurdle of having representation in all the constituents. It's a feat that cannot be achieved by any political party. Even ZANU-PF, with the support of the state, we're struggling. We did it and we won. How did you do it? So because they that you get funded by foreign forces or foreign government companies. Or What's your response to that criticism? Well, Zimbabwean citizens are not foreign. They are the ones who, who are sponsoring, funding, and resourcing the struggle. It's a Zimbabwean effort, it's a citizen effort. And we're so happy, we're thankful to the Zimbabwean citizens. We have not received a dime from any government. In fact, uh, we would not be comfortable receiving any money because ours is an indigenous effort and we are happy with the commitment of the citizens to the project. That's why we are so grateful to Zimbabweans. And of course, ZANU-PF are so shocked because they thought that we would be found wanting, but we, fo we found winning and we are happy with that. We congratulate Zimbabweans, we congratulate the citizens for continuing to support their project. And it's going to be a citizen victory. That's why now Mr. Mnangagwa and his team are in sixes and sevens. The only hope they have is to uh, probably be a distant third with all the other political parties that are campaigning. After the elections, 23rd September, again 2018, I flew back when they said I was a wanted person. I flew into Zimbabwe, I went through the court process, and all the charges were quashed. This is the story so far. But did you reach out to your fellow uh, members of uh, ZANU-PF to try and mend their relations? We did. We did a hell of a lot of work, from calling them to even engaging some of the liberation movements. We went to the African National Congress, and the delegation was sent to engage with the ZANU-PF with regards to our position, as former comrades, we appealed to those institutions we felt could actually be understood, you know, from a revolutionary point of view. But it appeared they were not interested at all. And this has been going on for a very long time. And we felt now, no, we can't continue like this. Now you are contesting elections. What prompted you to take this decision? It is clear that Zimbabwe is going in the wrong direction. And we have to restore our country. We have to look at the best interests of our country, come out of our slumber, and go into these elections. It is a very serious decision we've taken because we realize without us attending and also making a contribution to our country's resolution of our crisis, we are going to continue down the precipice. But you were part of the cabinet of former President Mugabe. You were together with the current president and the rest of the team that is in cabinet, yeah, but look you at, couldn't resolve the problems of Zimbabwe. No, no, but look Zimbabwe. at when we were in cabinet, civil servants, minimum were getting about 500 US dollars. Today they're getting $50. The state of the economy was a lot better than it is today. The freedoms of our people were even a lot better than they are today. But how would people trust you when you were part of the system? Well, but you were part of the system. I don't deny that. But we have seen exactly the ills in our system. That must be corrected. We are saying we have been inside. It is also those people who have a better understanding of the inside who should be able to correct this system. Now, looking at the current situation, there were fears that uh, you are not going to make it to the ballot. Are you happy in relation to how those who are responsible to prepare for elections have conducted themselves, including the Electoral Commission? I think the Electoral Commission has done its part. What I am concerned about is the general security architecture around the whole process, where there is intimidation, and called for intimidation, uh, people trying to throw fears, but we are confronting that. We will be going to Zimbabwe to campaign in the country. Whatever it takes, I am going to be standing and campaigning in my country. I would argue that uh, when you were part of uh, President Mugabe's cabinet, this is exactly the tricks that were applied to uh, kind of silence the opposition. And these, are, these are some of the things, in hindsight, we must correct. We can't continue in this direction. 
It just doesn't work. We need to restore the freedoms of our people. We can't shoot people in the streets. Well, like what happened in August. You bring down 18 people and you simply say nothing has happened. That kind of behavior is unacceptable. What does it mean? It has affected Zimbabwe standing in the international community. We want to restore our economy. When we are also acknowledging that a lot has happened between us, a lot happened in the past, we must reconcile our people. We must reconcile our country and focus on the core issues. Our people are suffering. We can't continue this trajectory where there is a binary, there is toxicity, there is hatred. Zimbabweans cannot have hatred as a currency. It is not working. Look at our currency. It's collapsing on a daily basis. It means we require to restore our own economy. We've got to stabilize our own politics. We've got to be people who have one accord. We can't continue engaging the world from a different perspective, different voices, multiple voices are destroying our nation. When I spoke to the Minister of Information a while ago, she told me that some of you don't want to go to Zim because you have cases to answer. Are you confident you'll be able to go back in Zimbabwe and campaign? This, or are you this, going to use a megaphone? This is the kind of inter intimidation. If anything, Zimbabwe is a crime zone. When some of us were shot at, has the, anybody investigated what happened? Now she comes here, tries to appear like she's a saint. No, she just came, I think she just didn't have something to do, and has embarrassed herself. We want to be serious about restoring Zimbabwe. We realize it's critical that we reconcile, reconnect with our society, and bring about a new Zimbabwe. As politicians, our haggling, our fights, are not helping the ultimate objective of a better country. We now must bring to an end fear, intimidation, so that Zimbabweans can become a people who focus on the core responsibility of developing our economy. Your key manifesto points. Can you take us through your key manifesto points? Firstly, we must reform our country. We must reform our institutions. We must ensure that our institutions serve everybody. Renewal. Zimbabwe's leadership must be renewed. If you look at the civil service, you look in politics, it's the same characters who have been in there since 1980. It's time. We also brought in new faces. We also want to ensure that the political system that we've been using is uh, changed. We want to bring about a broad base of people, form a government of national unity, bring the skilled people who can make a difference to our country. I look at some of the skills we had in the JNU, Tendai Biti, Washman Mule, people who have served in government before, Dr. McCorn and many others. These are people we want to bring into this government so that we can all together work on renewing our economy. To have a government of national unity, parties must agree. There must be a kind of, uh, in Africans, do nothing coming together. Are Zimbabweans ready for such a move, particularly the governing party, ZANU-PF? Well, I'm not talking about ZANU-PF. I'm standing as an independent candidate. But you and have to include yes, those who true. are in the ZANU PF because currently they're in government. We are let the people of Zimbabwe now make a choice. We've had this crisis for a long time. There are so many candidates who are going to be standing for the local elections, who are going to be standing for parliament, and those of us who are standing for the president. So there is a three-tier system. Now, I am imploring Zimbabweans to make the best choices. We want people who are prepared to make a contribution to the revival of our economy. As our voters go to cast their votes, they must look at the characters. These are the people who are going to draw leadership from all the political parties. Once we have assumed the reins of the country's president, I shall proceed to set up a cabinet composed of all the various elements from the various political parties, including the independents who are standing. Because this is the thing we must do to bring about an end to the toxicity in our society, we want to relive the moments we had in 2009, which were a lot better than what we're going through today.